Hi, today we're going to win the game against time. Real time in WIST. Today I'm going to show you how you can create a real time WebSocket in WIST that will update your AG grid in real time without having to go through Superbase. We're going to integrate this WebSocket fully natively in WIST without any API connector in the middle. This is really like straight up real time. But I want to emphasize on one thing before we're going to start here. Um, the way I built is just for test and illustration purposes. It is not secure. I'm exposing my API key here in the side code while doing it like this. You want to create an environment variable. You want to add proper encryption and decryption in there as well to protect your API key. But again, this is just a simplified tutorial. So this is just how you're going to do it. But you still have to look into how to securely implement this, what I'm going to teach you today. But yeah, now let's dive into how we're going to build this. So as you can see, it is really in real time adding data in here. And you see the number is growing uh, every second. So it is populating this grid. So now the question is, how are we going to load this data? And if we're actually going to inspect elements, we see that in our console log, there is a lot of things going on. We're doing a lot of calls in here. You see, it's, it, it's happening all the time. The whole party is going on. So this is what we're doing. We're fetching um, from a WebSocket in real-time data. This is what a WebSocket is. It is a real-time data source. Right now, you cannot connect this with requests and WIST if it doesn't go through Superbase. But in this case, we want to connect it directly. So what we're doing here, and I will be exposing my API key, but no worries, I'll be changing it after this video. Uh, or maybe, you know what, there's no payment method on there, so uh, I'll just keep it on there. So, uh, you, you will just at some point not be able to see any live data anymore if I hit my limit. <laughs> but yeah, so what we're doing here is we're doing this, we're running this code to call this WebSocket, and we're going to have our uh, WebSocket token in here, right? This is the token. I'm referencing this for the traits WebSocket, and you can actually find the sample code in their documentation on FinHub. So I'm going to call the WebSocket. I'm connecting to the WebSocket and subscribing to it and also starting an event listener right in here for Apple, Binance, and all of that. And then I'm listening for messages. So after I subscribe, think of it like this. You subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. And the next time I'll post a video, so you subscribe to my YouTube channel in here. And the next time I post the video, you'll get a message. This is a bit how this is working with this API. You're subscribing and then you're uh, getting a message. And then here we have an event listener that when we get a message, we're going to... Um, take this message, we're going to parse it as a JSON, so we will return it as a JSON, and then we will take the event data and we define the data of it using dot notation. So we get the data sent back and we say, yes, nice data, thank you, but we only want the data of this data. And then we're going to set this as the variable WebSocket, which is this one. And we're actually running this code, not in action. We're running this code in the variable since we're going to do a computed variable. So we have a computed variable running this code. And now this part of the code is the variable where we run the code defining itself by the response that this iteration of the WebSocket has. And then we're going to do a const for the current array. And actually, I can remove that because I just simplified the code on line 16 now. So now we have another um, variable containing an array of all the traits. Because if we were to only set this array we're going to render in the AG grid, we would only get the latest um, traits and they would just disappear every time it reloads. We don't want that. We want to have live data in here but that continue that continues growing our data set. So what we're going to do is we have a second variable called v dot trade underscore data and we're going to say okay we we'll take the um the current WebSocket, the newest 
fetching we're going to get from the live data source and we're taking the old data and we're merging this together into an array and this array will be set as the new v.trade data value. So we're going to take the old value and say we want to keep that, but let's just put the new value in front of the old value so we have this array that keeps on growing and growing and growing. So this is what we're going to do here. And then when we got the data, we're doing this uh, action in here to unsubscribe from the data so that we have this one action, we subscribe, we got our data. Now that we got our data, we unsubscribe and we start again and again and again in here. So this is one way I found to be very helpful if you need to work with live data. Of course, you maybe don't want to populate an array of 5,000 items within five minutes. That may not be the best example for using live data in your project, but maybe you just want to keep track of one stock and you don't need to populate 5,000 crypto transactions here. But maybe you do need to. And if you do need to, this is how you're going to do it. But you can use the same principle just for number. You can do, you, you could do, I don't know, you could use this for the current stock rate of Apple. And you would only define this within one value variable. And this variable will be called Apple stock value WebSocket. So you can use this for one thing. You can use this as I'm doing it here for a whole array. So let's go through one more thing here. If I have the data, in here, I need to now push the data into the, into the AG grid. So what we're going to do, and by the way, if you don't know how to set up an AG grid, I highly recommend you to watch the previous video I made. This will is a step by step tutorial on how to set that up. And this is where I actually based on that. This, what you see here is just my previous video copied and pasted. It's just, I used my own clonable here. I just updated a few things to make it work in real time. So what we're going to do here, we're going to look that if the current WebSocket has a length that is greater than zero, we're going to run a function that we already talked about in the previous video, how that works, to load the data from the v trade uh, v, uh, v underscore uh, v dot trade underscore data that way around. I'm so sorry. Um, we're going to load this new array that now contains the new item merged into it, the new array merged into it. And as you can see, that array keeps on growing and growing. Every time we do a WebSocket call, we add the response we get from that WebSocket call and merge it into the existing array and merge and merge and merge until we have millions of items in there. And we actually have already thousands of items in there. Yeah, as you can see, it keeps on growing all the time. And we we have this in here, and we're going to set this as the new data source for our AG grid. And that way you can see, wow, right now they're going crazy with crypto. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, wow, <laughs> that's something. Um, yeah, so this is how we're going to get this real-time effect in the database that we are basically resetting the, the, the data in here and saying, by the way, here is the new data, here's the new data, here's the new data. And that way we see that the new data, every time we complete a WebSocket call, the new data is initializing in our AG grid. And this is how you're going to use live data using WebSockets in your Wiz and Webflow project shown on the example of the AG grid. But this works for a rendered list. If you want to have that long of a rendered list, it will work for um, just set text. If you want to set text for a specific stock price or something like this, or whatever you want to do, whatever your heart desires, you can build it now real time with the power of WIST. And I ho really hope that this helps you and that you're going to build a lot of exciting stuff with this. And yeah, if you have any video ideas or any questions about this, please feel free to put them down in the comments and I'm always super happy to help out. Thank you so much for all your support and thank you so much for watching. I really, really, really appreciate that. And yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.